Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I pray that you're having a wonderful day. I pray that you are grateful to the Lord for things being as well as they are. Um, and I still say that the God of the Bible is better to all of us, to borrow a phrase from another man of God out there, than we deserve. What a mighty God we serve. We are praying for you today. We are praying for the saints of God who have been in the, uh, in the, uh, in the way, uh, in the path of the storms. And, and have you noticed uh, August the 5th? Uh, this year, Hurricane Debbie hit the U.S., a Category 1 hurricane. Helene, we've just been talking about Helene on uh, September the 27th uh, of this year, a Category 4. And uh, just on last night, Milton, a Cat 3. Now, let me, let me say this. Tremendous praises and tremendous honor and acknowledgement should be given to the God of the Bible because uh, that, that, that storm, Milton, was a cat five. But by the time it hit Florida, God slowed it down to a category three. Now, the cat three is devastating enough, but my friends, that could have been, that could have hit with the fury of a cat five and all oh, the loss of life, uh, even though there was lo lives lost with uh, Milton as a three. Can you imagine all oh, the deadly, the danger, the, 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 the carnage uh, that would have taken place had it been a category five? So we thank God for, for his goodness his kindness, and his tender mercy. Now, I want to read something to you because, listen, I'm a Bible man. I am a preacher. I'm not a secular psychologist. I'm not a secular psychiatrist. I'm not a life coach. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm not a secularist. Uh, I am a man of God. I believe in the biblical perspectives of all things. I am not a deist. As I told you before, I don't believe that God has just wound up this earth and the universe and all that there is and has said, uh, operate on your own, run on your own, and uh, I'll come and check you later. No, I believe that the God of the Bible made everything, made the universe, created all that exists, and that he is in charge, that he intervenes, that he runs it, that you, I believe in prayer. I believe that you can pray and God will step in and change the outcomes of things. I believe with all my heart that prayer, Prayer got into the uh, into nature and slowed down Hurricane Milton. And I believe that it is the grace of the Almighty that these things do not happen more often as they do. I believe it's the grace of God that they don't happen every day during hurricane season. And I thank God, Brother Gary, that there is a, such a thing as a hurricane season. And, uh, and that that season doesn't last for 12 months. So God is good and worthy to be praised. But what's the issue? We live in a sin-cursed world, and we live in a world where uh, we're just bold now. We're just bold in our wickedness. We're bold in our sin. You know, we, we're just bold. And we behave as though there is no God. We behave as though uh, God won't say anything. God won't do anything uh, that the Lord uh, will not intervene. Psalm 73 and 11 says, and they say, how doth God know? And is there knowledge in the most high? That is the wicked, the lofty. Uh, they say, <clears throat> Does the Most High know anything or does he know everything? Is that knowledge in, is God keeping up with this stuff? Well, let's look at what the, the Bible, what Job says in Job chapter number 22 and verse uh, 12 and 13. Job says, 
Is not God in the height of heaven? And behold, the height of the stars, how high they are. And thou sayest, how doth God know? Can he judge through the, the dark clouds? I mean, you, you're behaving as though the thick clouds, verse 14, are a covering to him, and he seeth not, and he walketh not in the circuit of heaven. <clears throat> We're behaving as though God is not paying attention. Now, listen to me. Go with me on this. Psalms uh, 10. Let's look at the 10th Psalm right quick. Right quick here in this impromptu Bible study. Psalms uh, 10. And I want to read right quick to you. Gary, I'm trying to find it so fast till I'm slowing myself down. Psalms 10 and, uh, and 11 says, He hath said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He never seeth it. These people are pretending as, as though God is not paying attention, that God doesn't see. And I'm going to talk to you about what God is seeing because our God sees everything. Psalms uh, 94 and verse 7. Look at this. Yet say they, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. That is, God is not looking and God is not paying attention. Wouldn't you ask, uh, what are you talking about? What are you, what are you saying that God is not paying attention to? I believe that the God of the Bible is paying attention to how we have, during this um, uh, uh, election season, we're just days away from the uh, November 5th election and uh, uh, less than a month away from the election. And I, I have been talking to you about this and I will continue to talk about it. Every other commercial now is about, well, killing babies. The Bible says in Proverbs uh, at, at chapter uh, 30, 31 and, uh, and verse 8, this is a commandment. Uh, this is what uh, the king's mother gave him advice. She told him to do this. She says, open thy mouth for the dumb. Open your mouth, not for the stupid, not for the ignorant, but for the voiceless. Open your mouth for the voiceless in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Is there anyone who is more voiceless in society than an unborn child? And yet we have seen smart people, smart people, uh, professional communicators, people who know how to tug on your emotions, people who are the best liars uh, that, uh, that hell has ever produced. These people are violating the scripture in ways like I have never seen before. These people are wicked in their violation of the word of God. Isaiah chapter number five says this, and in verse uh, 20, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And this is spoken with exclamation points. Isaiah is preaching hard. He's showing energy and he's saying, woe be unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's how this particular passage is written, my friends. And we see this with every other commercial. It's a, they are slick commercials. They are smooth commercials. They are well-produced commercials. 
where they feature either an individual who have gone through a traumatic po- uh, uh, time in their lives or an actress who is good at playing a role. You've seen the commercials of the blonde or blondes or different ones who have had problem pregnancies and the doctor told them that the baby wouldn't make it and uh, they had to abort and they're pretending that the whole abortion issue in North Carolina and in the national elections is about women whose life is at stake and the doctors have said to them, you need to abort this baby or she's been raped or something horrible like that. And so they are, this is, it's like an October surprise. They're, they're right here, just days away, they're trying to reinforce to you, pull on your heartstrings because they know Americans are good people at heart. We're good people. We're good and decent people at heart, regardless to uh, what your political affiliation will be is. We're, uh, most Americans are decent people. We'll, we, we'll help each other. We'll pull each other out of the ditch. We'll stop and help strangers on the side of the road. We, we're, we're good people. And they make you think that the argument of, uh, about abortion is about situations like that. When these wicked producers, wicked people in high places, wicked politicians, and I, yes, I use the word wicked because if, if you are well aware that those commercials that you are showing right now represent less than 2%, of all abortions. You know that the big fight is over the 98%. My question to those of you who say that uh, we believers, and I'm not running for any office uh, in the natural, that we believers who fight to let the baby live, who fight to let the unborn get a chance to be born. You're trying to paint us all into uh, a corner and make it look like we are heartless people and we could care less about the mother and we could care less about what transpired. Uh, and, and you're using extreme cases to hide the fact that what you really want is you want abortion on demand up to the time of birth for any reason or, now listen to Brother Wooden here, for no reason at all except that you, uh, that the woman you have just decided and the man, by the way, have no say uh, and, the, and the lady just said, I don't want this baby. Up to the time of birth. That's what you're fighting for. And you know it. And that is evil. And when you use these commercials to pull at people's heartstrings, I say to those who have a heart, is there any such thing as a neat, bloodless, compact, beautiful, painless, sanctified, righteous abortion. The truth is, my friends, we're talking about a bloody business, a ugly business where millions of citizens, both male and female, are slaughtered in this country and around the world every year. Thousands daily. Now listen to me. And they pretend that God doesn't know. That God doesn't see. Well, the prophet, the prophet 
Jeremiah spoke to this. Jeremiah had something to say about this. This is where I'm headed, Brother Garrett. I'm trying to show them that God is speaking. You know, I started out talking about the storms, right? Well, Jeremiah said this in chapter number four, verse one. He says to Israel, he says, if thou return, O Israel, speaking to the nation of Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me. And if thou will put away the abominations out of my sight, then shall thou not be removed. He said, you'll be able to stay longer. I won't remove you. And if thou shalt swear, if you will declare that the Lord liveth, if the church people would just do this, that the Lord liveth in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness, and that the nations shall bless themselves in him, that nations do themselves a favor if they not ignore God's laws, God's rules and God's laws, but if we embrace them. I'm amazed at the number of, 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 of Christians who criticize Christians and say, you're trying to legislate morality. Well, morality doesn't need to be legislated. Lated. And what we're seeing is not the legislation of morality. We're seeing the legislation of immorality. This country, you know, they say this country had Roe v. Wade in place for over 50 years. Well, the country uh, uh, got along for over 200 uh, uh, years without Roe v. Wade being in place. So, all right, you can add your 50, I'll argue our 200 or so. You, do you see what I'm saying? What we did was we legislated immorality and corrections have been in place to uh, so that, that this immorality would not be the federal law of the land. So people are now trying to read legislate and push immorality and then in, uh, uh, accuse uh, uh, those of us who see what they're doing as trying to legislate our morality. Well, I tell you what, I'll take my chances standing before the God of the Bible with having been guilty of trying to legislate morality than I would standing before him and I was guilty of legislating immorality. Oh, so we'll see which, we'll see who, praise God, who does better and who fares better in the day of judgment. He says, for the nations shall bless themselves in him and in him uh, shall they glory. Thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem. He says, break up your fallow ground and sow not among uh thorns. That is, stop that wickedness that you're doing. Don't try to put righteousness on top of ungodliness. We can't pray, speak in tongues and wave our hands and, 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 and uh, uh, act all pious and sanctified while at the same time supporting some of the most evil legislation that's ever been attempted on man. The Bible says this, this is where I'm headed, Gary. You know, it takes me all day to get there. We talked about Debbie. We talked about Helene. We talked about Milton and these storms. But you know what? And, 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 the, and the world is quick to tell you it's climate change. It's global warming. These things are man-made. Well, that might be 1% of it. it. Might be 2%. Maybe 3%. But I believe the overwhelming 98%, 90, 99%, 97% it ain't climate change. It's the judgment of a righteous God. Do you hear me, my friends? The Bible says this in Jeremiah chapter number four and verse 27 and 28. Read it. The Bible says, for thus hath the Lord said, the whole land, speaking of Judah, shall be desolate. Yet will I not make a fool in. I'm not going to totally destroy them. And then he says this. This is what I want you to look at. He says, For this shall the earth mourn, and the heavens above be black, because I have spoken it, I have purposed it, and will not repent, neither will I turn back 
from it. What is my point? God controls the weather. And when God sees that a nation won't return to him, as he said to them uh, in to Israel in verse four, God sends storms. God causes the earth to tremble. God causes things to happen. God stirs up nations. God does, the, does these things, the God of the Bible, that is, to get people's attention. I believe, my friends, that as never before, Christians, believers, have got to turn back to the Bible. And thank God I'm not one of those preachers uh, who try to tell people who to vote for. I thank God that I am a, a registered uh, non-affiliate. I thank God I can tell you that neither party has their hands in my pockets. Now, a lot of you can't say that, can you? I thank God that I can, and I thank God that as uh, the, the members of the upper room will tell you that as I have told them, whether the cameras were on or off, I say to you, in this coming election, I'm going to quote some of my friends, a lot is at stake. So here's what you determine, uh, here's what you do. First of all, do not follow anybody's advice who tells you to separate your Christianity from your politics. Brother Wooden will tell you, don't you follow anybody's advice who tells you to separate your Christianity from anything. When you become a Christian, your walk with God is supposed to affect everything that you do. The Christianity is supposed to guide your marriage. The Christianity is supposed to uh, be show up in conflict resolutions. The Christianity is supposed to show up in how we do our jobs, how we work, how we interact in everything we do. The Christianity is supposed to affect uh, what we watch on television, uh, 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 what we wear, praise the Lord, how we talk, the words we use, all these things are to be affected by our Christianity. The Christianity affects the way we treat the poor. The Christianity affects the way we uh, uh, view the institutions of society, such as marriage and others. Christianity certainly is supposed to affect the way we view the elderly and how we view little children. You know, Jesus loved the little children and how we view even the unborn. Well, we get activity from John the Baptist uh, 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 when, uh, when, when the baby Jesus and John, when, when Mary and Elizabeth, praise the Lord, uh, get, get in the vicinity of each other. Praise the Lord. We know that there's life in the womb. David said in Psalms 139, you've created me there. Uh, and we know that there's life before God allows us to get into, into the womb. The Lord told Jeremiah, before I formed you, I knew you. So I got to bring this to a, 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 a close. All I'm saying to you is make sure, make sure, and I'm saying mine, I'm giving my advice with the cameras on, where people can hear what, I'm, what I say to people. And there is no difference, there's nothing different that Brother Wooden says uh, with the cameras on than with the cameras off. Because when you're standing on God's truth, you don't have to be one person when the camera's on you and then talk another way when the camera is off. I say to every one of you, be an informed voter. Be guided by your Christian values if you are a Christian. Do not, as I have said for years, for years, I've said this for years, and not just uh, when uh, a particular candidate uh, on either side may be the nominee for the party. Do not pray one way and vote another. The prayers and the votes are supposed to go in the same direction. Don't vote for activity that you're praying against. Don't vote for behavior that you're praying against. Please go out online, pull up the uh, platforms for the parties. The platform got the platforms guides the politicians. Read them. 
They'll tell you what they're for. Read them. They'll tell you who is actively promoting behavior that the Bible calls evil. Read it for yourself. And then pray. And then you ask God, Lord, what do I do? And in the meantime, just know when you turn on the television and you see the carnage in, uh, in uh, Asheville, in Florida, North Carolina, Florida, Georgia, and all these places across the country, fires out west, oh, all these things that are going on, whole communities being burned to the ground. When you see these things, sometimes those Santa Ana winds blow and the dry brush rub up against itself and causes a fire. And literally neighborhoods and towns and acres are consumed. Sometimes lightning strikes. Things that happen, uh, they're happening much more frequent, which by the way, it's what the Bible said. The Bible says all these things are the beginning of sorrows. That is, they are the beginning of birth pains, labor pains. And as the pains uh, become more frequent, we know that we're nearing the time uh, that she's about to give birth. We're living in the last days and we're seeing these things. And my friends, if we're to slow it down, if we haven't reached the point of no return, if we haven't reached the tipping point, then it's time for you to let your prayers guide your vote. It's time for you to make a decision based on the policies of an individual, based, not necessarily based on their personalities, but necessarily based on their policies. And you make that decision. That's not for your pastor, for your bishop, for anyone else to tell you to make. And I didn't really mean to go this far into the politics today. I'm here to invite you because we got an awesome service tonight and I have gone too long and I'm going to be here. But my friend tonight, Bishop Charles Johnson, praise the Lord uh, from Detroit, Michigan, that preacher who preached and blessed us real good doing my uh, pastoral anniversary service. I believe now it was the 35th anniversary. May have been the 36th, you know, that as, as the years roll on, they roll on. But he's an excellent preacher, a dear friend of mine, and uh, I'm excited about him being with us tonight. And he's going to be with us through our Saturday rally that will take place. And we're excited about Bishop Amia May being our guest speaker this coming Saturday. What's that? October the what, Brother Gary? October the 12th. And he's going to preach the word of God right here. And then yours truly will be ministering the word of God this Sunday. So we're going to have an awesome time. I've gone a little long today, but I wanted to speak to you. My point is, we need to know that God is watching. My, my, the point is, we need to know with these storms and these storms hadn't hit areas that are more sinful than other areas. I just covered that uh, this past Sunday in Luke's Gospel, chapter 13. Jesus told them, except you repent. The same catastrophes that happened to the, 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 the Gadareans, the same uh, thing that happened to them, and the things, the things that happened to uh, uh, the, the men that the pool of Siloam fell on. You've sinned enough for the same thing to happen to you. So these affected areas aren't more sinful. The point is they're going to be more and more and more affected areas because the land is mourning. The land is rebelling against our sin. And here we are now in a day where the commercials, they are so smooth. I'm going to close. They are so smooth. They are so well produced. And, and, and uh, oh, they know how to pull at you. I'm repeating myself now. But all they're trying to do is get you to pass laws where the unborn can be murdered in the womb 
up to the day of birth. Ask that pro-choice person. Just ask them, so how far along is too far? Just ask. That, po that, that politician who's telling you I'm for women's rights, uh, 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 Mr. Politician or Miss Politician, whoever you are, um, how far is too far? Let me tell you the answer they're going to give you. I'm fading out with this, Gary. They're going to tell you, well, we're going to leave that up to the mother and her doctor. We have nothing to do with that. That's a private decision. We don't get into the private decision. I.e., there's no such thing as too far. There's no such thing as too pregnant. We don't want to put a law in place at all that will restrict that. We think that that option ought to be extended to the day of birth. They're no longer arguing that it's not a person. They're no longer arguing that it's just a blob of, uh, of blood and cells and it's not even a human being. They're no longer arguing that the child can't feel the pain. They're no longer arguing any of that stuff anymore. The wickedness is on full display. They are saying to you that it's compassion to kill another human being and that those who are fighting to save lives, to save lives, are extreme. But I want to ask you a question. What is more extreme than ending a life? God bless you. See you tonight. Right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Johnson's going to preach and you're going to come and say amen. Saints, meet me here at the Upper Room.